The Kadaz Rim 1S is a high quality yet affordable single board computer well suited to hobbyist needs. While it doesn't have the power of its siblings such as the Edge 2, it strikes a fine balance between performance and price. This video will introduce you to the unique aspects that make the Vim 1S a noteworthy piece of hardware. Upon receiving the Kadaz Vim 1S package, you'll find a high quality compact single board computer similar in size to a credit card. Considering its price, the board carries some impressive hardware under the hood. A quad-core CPU and 2GB of RAM ensure respectable performance. Storage needs are well catered by an onboard 16GB eMMC storage, but a microSD card slot is also available if expansion is required. Regarding connectivity, the Vim 1S includes a 10100M Ethernet port for wired connections. There is also a Wi-Fi with IEEE 802.11 AC, A, B, G and N standards, as well as Bluetooth 5.0 capability for fast wireless communications. This board sports an HDMI 2.1 port for visual output and supports 4K at 60 frames per second, along with HDR video processing, making it a solid choice for media enthusiasts. It's worth highlighting the Amlogic S905 Y4 system on a chip, which is equipped with a 2 GHz quad-core Cortex-A35 CPU alongside an ARM Mali G31 MP2 GPU that can go up to 850 MHz for those GPU-intensive tasks. Priced at around $65 in the official store, the Kadaz Vim 1S is an accessible, power efficient and low profile choice. The Kadaz Vim 1S certainly makes a good first impression with its power efficient design. Despite lacking USB 3.0 ports and gigabit Ethernet, the available 10 100 megabit Ethernet connectivity along with its two USB 2.0 ports and Wi-Fi provide lots of options for basic GPIO access and peripheral connections. Now what makes the Vim 1S particularly appealing is its ecosystem and software support. This tiny computer can run various operating systems such as Ubuntu 22.04 which is the one that I tested this unit with, Android 11 and Debian. Its dimensions are 82 by 58 by 13 millimeters. Getting started with the Kadaz Vim 1S is seamless. The initial step involves connecting keyboard and mouse with an HDMI display. Then you power up the board by connecting it to a powered USB-C cable. After the computer has powered up, the OOO BIOS-like interface takes center stage, guiding you through the rest of the setup sequence. This interface is designed to simplify the user experience, making it akin to setting up a standard desktop computer. Remember though that the Vim 1S features a pair of USB-A ports which are limited to USB 2.0 functionality and that might affect transfer speeds uh, for certain peripherals, for example if you want to connect an external drive. Cooling is another aspect to note. The board operates without a cooling system by default, but if you're planning to run strenuous tasks on this machine, you should install a compatible heatsink from the Kadaz website to enhance heat management. Overall, following the user-friendly procedures to get things started, which are similar to other boards in the Kadaz lineup, such as the Vim 4 and the Edge 2 models, this ensures a smooth setup experience for the Vim 1S. The 40-pin GPIO connector, the addition of a real-time clock, and the V-in power port make this device an excellent contender of the Raspberry Pi. These features, coupled with a streamlined slim RJ45 port for networking, broaden the scope of what can be accomplished with this small yet mighty capable unit. At around $65, it's hard to overlook the value proposition offered here, especially when considering the complete package. It's got onboard storage, adequate RAM, connectivity options like high-speed wireless LAN and Bluetooth 5.0. So the Vim 1S is a compelling choice for many tasks that suit various application and users, especially in the maker community. You might be wondering if you can actually do much with the two gigabytes of RAM that come with a Vim 1S. Well, remember that there is a balancing act happening here of performance versus cost. So the Kadaz Vim 1S opted for a realistic middle ground approach when it comes to RAM and that's why its designers opted to include 
just 2 gigabytes of LPDDR4 RAM. While this RAM is sufficient for running tasks like streaming YouTube videos and doing simple word processing, this RAM certainly sets a boundary on what you can do, especially in projects that require multitasking. Users will find that while the device operates smoothly on singular tasks, the strain does become evident as more programs are launched. I was able to do some basic tasks such as browsing the internet and watching YouTube videos at a relative comfort. However, I hit a limit when I tried to run the Kodi multimedia application. It was just too clunky to use. I decided to experiment with the Vim 1S computer by installing and running Kodi, a media application known for being demanding regarding resources. With only two gigabytes of RAM on the Vim 1S, I knew that I was pushing its limits. So after installing Kodi, I found the performance was slow and barely usable. The Vim 1S struggled to handle the application demands, resulting in a less than ideal user experience. As part of this experiment, I wanted to try the Vim 1S with an external drive as I was planning to test it with local video and audio files. So I installed Ubuntu on an external SSD drive and booting from the external drive was just straightforward. Simply plug the drive into the USB port and reboot and that's all it takes. After checking in with one of the engineers at Cutters, he pointed out that Kodi performs much better if used with an operating system that is optimized for the hardware. That means the ARM logic system on a chip and of course for the task which is running the Kodi multimedia application. This operating system is Core Elec and I installed it within minutes using the Kadas OOO firmware. Now the difference in performance between Kodi on regular Ubuntu and the optimized Core Elec operating system is really staggering. Kodi on Core Elec is snappy and video playback is nearly instant. The performance was so good that I didn't bother using an external SSD for the media files. I just played videos from my file server using Wi-Fi and it worked great. So the main lesson from this experiment is that this $65 computer hides significant power within. To take advantage of this power, you will need to do some research to find optimized software. Without this optimization, your experience will be average at best. I do plan to use a Vim 1S as a headless computer for command line tasks, even though this device has significant video capabilities for its price. Command line use fits well with most of my typical use cases. I currently use a Raspberry Pi 4 or 3 for these tasks, such as running Python services or hosting simple websites for my courses. The Vim 1S would serve as an excellent server for services like Node-RED, all at a fraction of the cost compared to using a Raspberry Pi. Overall, the Kadas Vim 1S offers versatility and affordability for various headless applications, making it a valuable tool for DIY projects, automation, and IoT implementations. In conclusion, the Kadas Vim 1S is a power efficient single board computer. Despite its size, the Kadas Vim 1S doesn't skimp on connectivity. It offers a lot of options there. There's Wi Fi 5, Ethernet, basic GPIO access and the 40 pin GPIO connector. The board also includes a 16 megabyte SPI flash memory, which the Raspberry Pi doesn't have, catering to developers needs for flash memory. The RAM size is adequate for many applications and the inclusion of a logging screen allows for quick setup and use. It's power efficient and therefore it's a popular choice among enthusiasts looking for performance without the power draw and at a low cost.